So when the Pierre-Luc Dubois trade details came out, I'll tell you what, I saw that thing and I thought, wow, how did the Jets come this good out of a trade where PLD basically handcuffed Cheval Day off to a bus stop and left? Like, Ayafalo and Villardi are basically core pieces going forward. They're young, plus a prospect and a second round pick. Well done, Chevy. And that trade sparked a lot of excitement and hope in Jets fans from the Armageddon we saw at the end of the playoffs where it was like, oh, everybody's going to get traded. Nobody coming back. The Jets are going to have to rebuild. And then the owner came out and was like, hey, remember guys, we need to sell out every night or we're in trouble. There was just a lot of stress and tension in Jets land. And a trade like this completely completely changes the fortunes of the team. Now, I absolutely gave it to Shevel Day off when I heard that there was likely a buyout coming for Blake Wheeler. Like, why would you buy somebody out who has a good amount of trade value? Clearly now, we see that Wheeler wanted to go to like one or two very specific markets, and a trade was just not going to work there, so his hands were tied. And mad respect and props to Shevel Day off for doing right by his longtime captain and one of the longest tenured players in the franchise's history. But there's still the biggest fish of them all on the Jets who said he's not going to re-sign with the club most likely. Yes, he could always change his mind, but usually they don't in this type of situation. And there have been trade rumors swirling around him for over a month now. I mean, there was a period there where it looked like by the draft, it was going to be a done deal. Hellebuck either to the Devils or to the Sabres. But here we are, end of July, and Hellebuck is still a jet. And Cheval Dayoff is taking his time here in a goalie market that is really stale right now. Largely, I think, because of Aiden Hill. I mean, this guy was traded to Vegas for P nuts. Nobody wanted him. And then he comes out and gives an incredible performance to win the cup. I think that showed a lot of teams like, hey, we don't need to sell the farm and give up everything we have for a star goaltender to win the cup. I think that's why the market's a little stale right now, but I still think Hellebuck is going to get a haul for the Winnipeg Jets. I really do. He's too good of a goalie and he can do too much for a franchise. And Cheval Dayoff is really smart here. And if he can do two for two here with the Dubois and the Hellebuck trades, get great pieces is going forward, there might not even need to be a rebuild in Winnipeg. They could retool on the fly here and maybe become even better because they'll have guys who actually want to be there. Like, I'm honestly excited for the Winnipeg Jets now. I think you slap the C on Josh Morrissey's sweater. You see where Shifley and Ehlers' heads are at. Do I have to trade you guys? Because if I can, I will. Couple that with the Hellebuck trade, and then you move forward with a younger, more excited, more energized group. But here's the problem. If the Jets walk into this regular season with Connor Hellebuck, that complicates everything. And according to Elliot Friedman on NHL Network the other day, there's a very real possibility that that happens. And for the people saying, what? I thought he requested a trade. It doesn't look like he requested a trade, but he said that he will probably not sign an extension with the Jets, which means that he would come back and honor his contract if he has to. But if Hellebuck has a bad start to the season, then his trade value goes down, or even just teams in season making trades and moving any type of cap space becomes next to impossible. It is so difficult, especially for a goalie that you don't want to acquire Hellebuck unless you know that you're going to sign him and he's probably going to command Vasilevsky money, maybe a little bit less. Getting that cap space as a contender mid-season is so difficult. Like, if you're a contending team and you want to acquire Hellebuck, you're going to have to probably move out some significant roster players, which could hurt team chemistry, could hurt the lines. Like, that's a huge risk to take mid-season if you're going for the cup just for a goalie. So the trade market's going to be even more difficult than it is right now. And trust me, it's hard right now. So then what if you don't get to trade him in season because the market is so tough there? Oh, would you look at that? He's a free agent. And I guess at that point, you can still just trade his negotiation rights. But come on, the value of that is so dramatically piss poor compared to what you would have had for a Hellebuck that could actually play for a team. And not moving a gigantic core piece like Hellebuck, that's the type of move that hurts a franchise for years and years to come. So Chevy, he's done a great job here, but he's got to keep going. And he has to try to move Hellebuck before the start of the season. That's when things get really dicey. And it could ruin the this whole operation, this whole renaissance of the Winnipeg Jets, they got to be real careful here. Like, comment, subscribe. Let me know what you think about this in the comments down below. I'll see you in the next one. Peace out.